الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله This life is full of deception things that distract us from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in a hadith narration I believe it's in Sahih Muslim the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said inna dunya halawat al-khadira إن الله سبحانه مستخلفكم فيه فلينظر كيف تعملون فتق الدنيا وتق النساء فإن أول فتنة بني إسرائيل كانت في النساء The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said this world is a beautiful garden. In the dunya halawat al-khadra, like a beautiful garden, or some, you know, it's beautified with adornments. And verily, Allah subhanahu wa taala places you in it, establishes you in the dunya halawat al-khadra. When Allah subhanahu mustakhlafukum fi. And Allah establishes you and makes you successors, you know, generation after generation in this dunya. And He watches what you do. So it, it's a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. He gives us the chance. We, we enjoy the beauty of the creation. We see, are we going to be deceived by the dunya? Are we going to let it overcome us and not remember Allah Azza wa Jal? فَلْيَنْذُرُ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ And he looks to see what you, you know, to what, you, what you're going to do, what you do. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَتَقُ الدُّنْيَا وَتَقُ النِّسَاءَ So fear the world and fear the women. For verily the first fitna or trial or tribulation or test that befell the children of Israel is was regarding the women. Ahabatifillah immense benefits from this hadith. And it's a reminder to not get caught up, not allow this worldly life to supersede your ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to get so engaged and so indulged in things. Especially if it's going to keep you out of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah forgive us of our many shortcomings. Ameen. So, also from this hadith, we see the importance of those two tests for us. Which mainly have to do with our shahwa. But at the same time, it can also give you shubahat as well. The first being just the dunya in general, this worldly life. Getting caught up in activities that don't benefit us. Getting caught up in activities that take us out of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being consumed by obtaining wealth. Being too consumed by obtaining luxury in this life, property, status, all of these things can be towards your destruction and our fitna in the dunya. They're trials and tests. And likewise, the second thing has to do directly with our shahawat as well, and it has to do with the fitna of the women for men. That men are tested by women. That 
people, some people will say that it's sexist or that it's, you know, why does Islam always emphasize that women are a test and this and that and the other. This is a natural inclination that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made men in general a part of their fitrah. It's almost as like they are the hunters, like they are lions that love to do the action of having relations which serves the purpose of you know having children but it's not our purpose meaning that men it's a biological function it's that hunter he's going out to hunt and collect his his mates and this is a part of his fitra so with that being said that men are distracted by those things I believe much greater and I believe the evidence if we were to really study these things would show in accordance with that as well as far as social science that men they have a nature and they have an inclination to want to enjoy women and to have more than one woman in their lives you know polygamous relations this is the fitra, this is the nature of man. And we see that when people fight that nature and go against that nature, we usually find many problems that arise due to that. So therefore that is why, or that is some of the hikmah that we obtain from this hadith and showing us that man, due to his nature, he's distracted and finds it a trial with regards to the women. And that makes it that the beauty of the woman is a fitna and a trial for us. And you see that everywhere in societies where women cover and societies where women don't cover but especially in societies where women don't cover no matter the man even if he's focused he's trying to be professional he's trying to be this but the woman who has beauty and she's revealing parts of herself this is a a test for the man the man is but a man and is inclined towards that this does not go to say that women are not tested and that women do not enjoy men and what have you. But I believe that the men's nature, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, and the Prophet mentioned specifically men, I believe for that reason, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best.